The General Sports Authority of Bahrain and its UAE counterparts signed a Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperation in the field of sports in Abu Dhabi, which was signed by the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the UAE Minister of Education and Chairman of the General Sports Authority, Dr. Ahmed Belhoul Al Flasi. The signing of the MOU was witnessed by the GSA Director General, Saeed Hussein, Bahrain's Ambassador to the UAE, Sheikh Khaled bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and the Chief Executive Officer of the GSA, Dr. Abdurrahman Askar, as well as a number of officials from the two sides. The MOU stipulates enhancing cooperation between the two parties in qualifying sports caters, organizing various programs and events, and exchanging expertise and experiences on this occasion. His Highness Sheikh Khaled affirmed that the signing of the MOU strengthens the fraternal relations binding Bahrain and the UAE in various fields, particularly sports. He stressed that the signing of the MOU affirms the strength of the bilateral relations and the two countries' share desire to develop the sports sector and support cooperation in this field. His Highness hailed a major development in the UAE in various sectors, including the sports sector, which is witnessing further progress and prosperity as a result of the support of its president and ruler of Abu Dhabi, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Highness Sheikh Khaled expressed thanks and appreciation to the UAE for its warm welcome and generous hospitality, wishing it further progress and prosperity. For his part, Dr. Al Flasi highlighted the fraternal relations between the strong UAE Bahrain relations in various fields, adding that the memorandum reflects the two countries' keenness on bolstering cooperation in the field of sports, supporting sports talents, developing sporting capabilities, and enhancing the chances of success for athletes in the two countries. During his visit to Austria, the Interior Minister General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa received the Federal Minister of Interior Gerhard Karner, Acting Chartered Affair at the Mission of Bahrain to the UN in Geneva, Hassan Musa Shafi, and members of the delegation accompanying the Interior Minister. The Austrian official welcomed the Interior Minister, asserting the importance of the visit to promote cooperation and coordination to achieve the common goals. The Interior Minister asserted that Bahrain is blessed with security and stability, which stems from the royal vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He noted the role of joint efforts in enhancing security through purposeful programs and initiatives and the importance of continuing these efforts to improve the comprehensive security within the framework of security cooperation and coordination between brotherly and friendly countries. The meeting discussed cooperation, exchange of experiences, development of capabilities in all areas of security, work in light of the security changes and challenges the world is witnessing and in a manner that contributes to maintaining and strengthening security in addition to the importance of building on future visions to achieve security. The Interior Minister and his Austrian counterparts signed a declaration of intent between the Ministries of Interior of the two countries to strengthen security cooperation and law enforcement and criminal justice. It was agreed to activate the declaration through communication and coordination between the two sides. In the presence of the Honorary President of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Isa Al Khalifa, and under the patronage of the Chairman of the Supreme Authority of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the third round of the Bahrain International Horse Racing Championship race series was held today with the participation of owners, trainers, riders and horses from the various international stables as part of the 15th race of this season, which was held for the Cup of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Cups of His Sons, His Highness Sheikh Hamad bin Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa. The event was held at the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club track in Rafa area in Sakhir. The race was also attended by the Vice President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, Vice President of the Supreme Authority of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, Member of the Supreme Council for the Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, a number of their Highnesses, representatives of sponsors of the race, and an audience of fans of equestrian sports and horse racing. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa delegated His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa to crown the winners of the race cups, where His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Isa Al Khalifa, owner of Al Muzdahir stable, received the second round cup 
from His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, who presented the cup of the first round to Abdullah Fawzi Nas, the sixth round cup to His Highness Sheikh Sultan al Din bin Muhammad bin Salman Al Khalifa, the seventh round cup to Khalid Abdul Rahim, and the eighth round to the winning owner Abdullah Fawzi Nas, while the general manager of Hitzman Company, Taj Phil, presented the third round cup to the winning owner Hadi Al Afu.
The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment continues early preparations for the Hajj season for the current year. In this regard, an agreement for Pilgrims Affairs was concluded for the year 1445 with the Ministry of Hajj and Umrah in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment, Nawaf bin Muhammad al Maouda, praised the efforts made by the Ministry of Hajj and Umrah and ensuring continuous coordination to provide everything that would facilitate the affairs of Bahraini Hajj and Umrah pilgrims. And the Kingdom of Bahrain Hajj Mission, headed by Sheikh Adnan al qattan signed a number of agreements with the companies providing services to Bahraini pilgrims and residents. This comes in the context of the mission's endeavor to provide the best services to pilgrims in accordance with the decisions of the Supreme Committee for Hajj and Umrah Affairs. Based on the standards approved by the Saudi Ministry of Hajj and Umrah, the mission also signed an agreement with the Unified Agents Office Company to provide reception services at the ports and facilitate the exit and check-in of pilgrims from the airports. A contract was also signed with the General Automobile Syndicate, which is concerned with transporting pilgrims to and from all airports and to prayers in the Grand Mosque in Mecca and the camps. Sheikh Adnan al qattan called on those wishing to perform the Hajj ritual for this year's season to quickly register with the licensed Bahraini Hajj com companies and campaigns and reserve their seats within the specified period which will end on the 20th of February. The 18th Spring of Culture Festival, the largest cultural season in the Kingdom of Bahrain, kicked off at the Bahrain National Theatre, which witnessed the Bahraini Sound Art Concert. This came in the presence of the Chairman of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. A number of high-ranking official and diplomatic figures participated in the ceremony, and the distinguished Bahraini artist Ahmed Al Jumeiri, the artist Muhammad At Tamimi, and the artist Abdul Rahman Awad and performed by the Bahrain music band led by maestro Ziad Ziman. The ceremony witnessed great interaction from the audience, especially during the presentation of Azafna, the dance that accompanies the Bahraini vocal art, as well as during the performance of Asafqa, which includes rhythm that is one of the most distinctive features of this authentic art. The Spring of Culture Festival in its 18th edition will continue until the beginning of the next March, which includes a range of diverse programs and events in various cultural sites. The work of the Supreme Committee for the Integrated Industrial Partnership for Sustainable Economic Development concluded yesterday, which was hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain from the 10th to the 11th of this January. The complementary partnership contributes to strengthening the economic ties in the region in terms of enhancing intra-regional trade and competitiveness, transferring technologies and knowledge, and diversifying the economic base comprehensive partnership that aims to achieve economic development in various fields and create qualitative opportunities through them. This integrated industrial partnership for sustainable economic development aims to achieve integration between the components, capabilities and expertise possessed by the five partnership countries which are the Kingdom of Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, the Arab Republic of Egypt and the Kingdom of Morocco. This provides industrial opportunities that contribute to the diversification of the economy and increase the competitiveness and flexibility of the industrial sector, which is a pillar of economic diversification and an important axis of national development. The Kingdom of Bahrain's participation is an indicator of its keenness to develop its infrastructure and attract more investments, in addition to creating opportunities that enable securing the supply chain, self-sufficiency and localization. These industries target the fields of agriculture, food, fertilizers, medicines, textiles, clothing, metals, petrochemicals, and plastics. 
The Supreme Council for the Environment affirmed the Kingdom of Bahrain's keenness to implement its obligations towards the Montreal Protocol regarding substances that deplete the ozone layer and implement the national plans and initiatives that would achieve more gains and more progress, advance environmental work and confront environmental challenges of all kinds. This came during the opening of the symposium organized by the Supreme Council for the Environment in coordination with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, regarding the disposal of ozone-depleting chemicals used in the foam and thermal insulation sector. In regards of the severe harm that traditional practices in industry cause to the environment through the generation of ozone-depleting chemicals used in the foam and thermal insulation sector, there appeared to be an urgent need for rapid intervention towards developing a systematic plan to which the Kingdom of Bahrain is committed to achieving the advancement of environmental work and confronting environmental challenges. Among the ambitious national initiatives is holding a symposium organized by the Supreme Council for the Environment in coordination with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO. A number of manufacturers and suppliers from European and regional countries are participating in the symposium and in the presence of a number of specialists in the service field in the industrial sectors. The symposium is an opportunity to exchange experiences and learn about the best environmental friendly industrial methods. The Supreme Council for the Environment explained that in cooperation with UNIDO, it succeeded in providing appropriate quantities of alternative chemicals for use in the field of thermal insulation after examining them in the laboratory and ensuring their suitability to the Bahraini environment and atmosphere, which is known for its high temperatures and their compliance with the standards and requirements. The Ministry of Health confirmed the continuation of its efforts aimed at reducing the spread of mosquitoes in all governorates of the Kingdom of Bahrain. In this regard, periodic campaigns have been intensified in partnership with the private sector, according to a schedule and preventative plans targeting many locations. The Ministry stressed the importance of consolidating cooperation on the part of citizens and residents to strengthen the community partnership by following all preventative measures in homes and residential areas to limit the spread of mosquitoes and the causes of their reproduction and also noted the necessity of the following instructions and guidelines by the concerned authorities. The Kingdom of Bahrain congratulated Morocco for winning the election to lead the United Nations Human Rights Council for the year 2024. This reflects Morocco's international recognition of its foreign policy, human rights achievements, efforts to consolidate tolerance and peaceful coexistence, and support the Sustainable Development Goals. The Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed Bahrain's appreciation for Morocco's diplomatic and legal efforts and initiatives on a regional and international level, as well as its confidence in its ability to lead the inter- governmental body and to promote and protect human rights. The ministry wished Morocco and its people further success and prosperity under the leadership of the Moroccan monarch, His Majesty King Mohammed VI. The United States and the United Kingdom have carried out military airstrikes against Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen, raising the fears of a broader escalation of the conflict in the region. The coalition struck more than 60 targets in 16 locations in Yemen with more than 100 precision-guided munitions, including Tomahawk cruise missiles launched from submarines. U.S. President Joe Biden said he ordered the airstrikes in response to unprecedented attacks by the Houthis on commercial ships in the Red Sea. A U.S. administration official said the strikes had targeted Houthi missile radar and drone capabilities. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said the Houthi attacks had disrupted trade, driven up commodity prices and exacerbated the humanitarian crisis in Yemen. He added that the UK Navy would continue to patrol the Red Sea as part of a multinational operation. In related matters, U.S. President Joe Biden said the airstrikes against the Houthis were carried out in cooperation with the United Kingdom, 
stressing that he will not hesitate to take more measures to protect the freedom of international trade navigation. The American president described the operation as successful and said the military has targeted a number of sites in Yemen which the Houthis used to endanger the freedom of navigation in one of the most important waterways in the world. He pointed out that the airstrikes come as a direct response to the unprecedented Houthi attacks against international trade and naval ships in the Red Sea. Biden stressed that the strikes represent a clear message that says the United States and its partners will not tolerate hostile attacks in the Red Sea that endanger freedom of navigation. Meanwhile, the United States Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin confirmed that the airstrikes launched by the American and British forces against the Houthi targets in Yemen aims to disrupt and weaken their capabilities to endanger the seas and to threaten world trade in one of the most important water corridors in the world. He added that the strikes targeted sites linked to the Houthi drones, ballistic missile, cruise missiles, coastal radar capabilities and air controls. Meanwhile, Britain's Prime Minister Rishi Sunak confirmed that the United Kingdom and the United States, with the support of many allies, launched the airstrikes in Yemen. The British Prime Minister, in a statement, said the British Royal Air Force carried out the airstrikes against the military facilities used by the Houthis in Yemen. He pointed out that in recent months, the Houthis have carried out a series of dangerous and destabilizing attacks against commercial ships in the Red Sea. Sunak affirmed that the reckless Houthi movements are risking the lives of people in the Red Sea and leading to the exacerbation of the humanitarian crisis in Yemen. He added that despite the repeated warnings of the international community, the Houthis continue to carry out attacks in the Red Sea, including those against British and American warships. The United Nations Security Council adopted a resolution demanding that Yemen's Iran-backed Houthis seize all attacks on ships flowing through the Red Sea. The resolution sponsored by Japan and the United States was approved with an 11 to 0 vote. Only four countries, China, Algeria, Mozambique and Russia abstained. The plan also demands the release of a Japanese operated cargo ship seized on November 19th after a Houthi attack. Houthi rebels have been in a civil war with Yemen's government since 2014 and their latest attacks come in retaliation for Israel's ongoing war with the Palestinian group Hamas in Gaza. The US and its allies in the region are patrolling the area hoping to stop future attacks. Oman's Foreign Minister Sayyid Badr al Busidi met in Brussels with the High Representative of the European Union for Foreign and Security Policy and Vice President of the European Commission, Josep Borrell. They discussed the tragic, tragic situation in the Gaza Strip and its repercussions for the region and the world. They both agreed that the priorities were to contain the crisis, prevent its escalation and establish a ceasefire to save the lives and open corridors for humanitarian aid. Both people said the release of the hostages would create a climate of hope for all parties on the path to a two-state solution and the right to the Palestinian self-determination. Minister Sayyid Badr stressed Oman's position calling for the establishment of an independent Palestinian state in order for a lasting peace to prevail in the region. He said the international community had a responsibility to stop the war and its repercussions. The World Health Organization Regional Director for the Eastern Mediterranean, Dr. Ahmed al madhari warned that the health conditions in Sudan are getting worse in light of the ongoing conflict. al madhari confirmed that due to the deterioration of the security situation in Sudan, the organization was forced to suspend its work there following the dangerous developments and the spread of chaos since mid-December. The crisis has threatened health institutions, healthcare workers, and the international organizations from accomplishing their duties. A UN spokesperson highlighted the worsening humanitarian crisis in northern Gaza, emphasizing significant obstacles to relief efforts. The spokesperson for the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Stefan Dujaric, said between January the 1st and the 10th, only three out of the 21 planned aid deliveries of food, medicine, water, and other life-saving supplies to the north of Wadi Gaza were able to proceed. He highlighted the critical role these supplies play, including medical supplies to Gaza City and fuel to water and sanitation facilities in Gaza City and the north, which were denied by the Israeli authorities. 
Jujeric compared the current situation to previous months, revealing a significant decline in aid access. He noted the drop from over 70% in December to about 14% in early January.